Today, land values rampage. Hello again, this is Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Welcome to this post covering finance and properties with a distinctively Australian flavour. There's something called the value of general who is responsible for providing independent and impartial valuations for the use by councils and state governments for levying rates and taxes in determining compensation for landowners when their land is compulsory acquired. The independence of the value of general ensures a clear separation between the impartial land valuation process and how state and local governments use the valuations for levying rates and taxes, or for the determination of compensation following the compulsory acquisition of land. Now, the New South Wales Value General has just released their latest report, which shows that residential land values in the state increased up to 24.8%, from $1.4 trillion to $1.8 trillion in the last financial year, and they called this an astonishing 25% rise. The report also revealed the total value of land in New South Wales rose 24% over the reporting period, doubling to $2.2 trillion since 2014, representing a dramatic acceleration in the historic rate of growth. Every market sector was hot through the 12 months, according to the analysis of more than 67,000 property sales. Coastal lifestyle locations, Byron Bay and Kaima, actually led the way in terms of residential value growth. The rural market was the standout performer, with a 26% rise. The logistics boom propelled the lift in industrial land of 23%, while commercial and retail land values increased 15%. It took almost 100 years from 1916 to 2014 for the value of land in New South Wales to pass $1 trillion in total value, but just seven years to go from $1 trillion to $2 trillion, the value of General David Parker told the Australian Financial Review. In the middle of a global pandemic, to have this level of land value growth across the entire state is astonishing, Dr Parker said. The annual report the first covering the entire 12 months of the pandemic, highlighted the boom experienced in regional and coastal housing markets as people took advantage of the work-from-home phenomenon to embrace lifestyle changes. Byron Bay, the north coast town that has become the playground of Hollywood celebrities and rich listers, and Kerma on the south coast, both recorded rises of more than 50% in residential land values. The New South Wales Value General said the trend to purchase in the region was partly due to changing perceptions and lifestyle factors, including more flexible working arrangements. This green change, tree change, sea change and ski change, has been exacerbated by greater employer flexibility in work locations as a result of home working during COVID-19, Dr Parker said. He added that people continue to search for greater affordability and preferred lifestyle options. There was also a whopping 71% rise in the value of rural properties in Byron Bay, reflecting the demand for lifestyle estates, country cottages and hobby farms. Closer to Sydney, residential land values in the Hunter Region coast area, which includes the commutable central coast, Lake Macquarie, Newcastle and Port Stephens, rose 38%. That's the highest in any region in New South Wales. In metropolitan Sydney, blue chip harbourside suburbs recorded the biggest rise in residential land values, matching similar house price gains recorded in the last calendar year. Mossman, Hunters Hill and Northern Beaches recorded a residential land growth of 29% over the 12 months to the 30th of June. And values on the south coast stretching from Bondi to the eastern suburbs and to Sutherland rose 28%. In the city of Sydney, where most homes are CBD apartments, townhouses and terraces, residential land values rose 18%. Parramatta in the inner west registered gains of 23%. And in the western Sydney region, which takes in Blacktown, Liverpool and Penrith, a 16% rise in residential values was dwarfed by gains across industrial at 24%, commercial at 30% and rural land at 33%. However, falling slightly below was the Murray South East and River Ina regions that saw residential land increase by 14.2, 15.5 and 12.4%.
respectively. The Central West saw a moderate increase at 9.8%. The Northern Tablelands was at 8%, with the Northwest region experiencing a little over a 4% growth. The commercial market increased across the state by 14.9% overall. The largest increases were in the Sydney West area, where values increased by 30.3%, followed close to by Hunter Coast, where values increased by 29.4%. The industrial market remained strong, with land values increasing by 22.8% over the state. The largest increases were in the city of Sydney, where values increased by 35% due to dwindling supply and increased demand for the logistics and e-commerce sectors. And overall, rural land values increased by 26%. And overall, rural land values increased by 26%, driven primarily by continued strong commodity prices, limited supply, and sustained demand for good quality farming, mixed cultivation and grazing lands. Dr Parker said the rising value of Western Sydney's commercial sector was driven by the demand for well-located properties close to major infrastructure projects, such as the Aerotropolis commercial precinct around the planned airport. And he said the increase in rural values across from Western Sydney reflected their rezoning potential because of existing or planned rail and road infrastructure. There are some terrific stories coming out about the land near the Aerotropolis, Dr Parker said. For example, in the 1930s, if you bought a suit from one of the tailors in the city, you got a free block of land in that area. Now they're worth millions. The average age of landowners in the area is very high. They bought their blocks decades ago and have been sitting, waiting and watching as the rezonings get closer, Dr Barter said. Selina McMullen, Senior Project Officer for the Value General's Office, said land values are based on the analysis of property sales. Revenue New South Wales will use the land values to help calculate the 2022 land tax with assessments averaged out over a three-year period. Ms McWillan said that this set of values would not be used for council rates and stressed that any increases would be determined by a rate peg set by the Independent Pricing and Regulatory Tribunal. Landowners need not worry about these land values impacting their rates, she said. New South Wales property owners, though, will pay the price for the rapid appreciation of their property through increased land tax bills, but the rises will be significantly less than the recent valuations because assessments are averaged out over a three-year period. Land values rose 3.9% in 2020 and fell 5.3% in 2019. So you can see that this huge boom was very much an anomaly. And of course, it's directly related to government stimulus and also very low interest rates that have driven the markets very hard. Whether it continues, of course, is another question. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.